Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm here to talk to you about a subject that we all love, animals. Think about the animals you know. Isn't it true that nothing beats coming home after school to be greeted with dog kisses or by a purring cat rubbing against your legs? And isn't it great to listen to the happy chirping of birds when the sun comes up or watch squirrels and pigeons cleverly gathering food in places where we would never be able to find anything to eat? Each and every animal is a unique and special individual. Animals aren't here for us to use any more than you are here for someone else to use. All animals really want is exactly what we want, to live a long, happy life free of pain and suffering. I'm sure you know that even the smallest thing you do can have a big effect on those around you, including animals. One of the very first lessons that most of us learn is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule simply means that we should treat others in the same way that we would like to be treated. In other words, put yourself in their place. Be nice, don't hurt them, and never ever be a bully or allow anyone else to be one. Pretty simple, right? My name is Stacy, and in this video, we're going to show you how to follow the golden rule with animals. We're also going to share some fascinating things about animals that you might not know because the more we learn about animals, the more we realize that this is their world too. Hi, I'm Rudy. One of the coolest things about animals is that they're so much like us. Did you know that rats love to play and be tickled? They make these chirpy noises when they're happy that sound like us when we giggle. And cows like to play games. They actually kick up their heels when they discover something new that they like. And they have very distinct personalities. Some cows are shy and some are outgoing. Some are friendly and some are downright bossy. Many cows choose their best friend when they're very young. Sound familiar? All animals have feelings just like us. They feel love, happiness, sadness, fear, and pain. Have you ever accidentally stepped on a dog's or cat's tail? That painful yelp is a lot like the way you would react if someone stepped on your foot, right? Animals like to be comfortable too. Chickens in Bristol, England learn to switch the heat on and off in their barn when they were too cold or too hot. Anyone who has a dog knows that dogs love to play. Just look at how they wag their tails when you play with them. And you're not the only one who enjoys a snow day. Crows have been observed sliding down snowy rooftops over and over again, just for the fun of it. And would you believe that some animals even like to play games? That's right, pigs love them. Chickens and turkeys are just as playful Groups of turkeys or chickens will actually toss around round objects like apples, cabbages, and small balls. If you were goofing around in class, it would probably surprise you if your teacher said, stop fishing around. Yet a new study suggests that fish are very playful. Can you think of any other ways in which humans and animals are alike? Animals love each other and enjoy spending time with their families. Mother hens and their chicks start talking to each other even before the chicks are hatched. The hens even sing a cheerful song to their developing babies. And like human mothers, animal mothers will do just about anything to protect their babies, even risking their own lives, just as your mother would risk hers to save you. The love between a mother cow and her calf is so strong that there have been many reports of cows who frantically called and searched for their babies long after the calves had been taken away and sold for meat. Let me tell you about one cow who gave birth to twins out in a field. She had already had five babies taken away from her, and she knew that both of her babies would be taken away unless she did something drastic. So she took one to the farmer and kept one hidden in the woods at the edge of the pasture and took care of her baby in secret. Think about this for a moment. 
This mama remembered losing her other babies, and she understood that if she took her two newborns back to the barn, she would never see them again. So she hatched a plan. Even though you know she must have desperately wanted to save both of them, she knew that hiding both calves would make the farmer suspicious. So she had to take one back to the barn. Can you imagine how heartbreaking that must have been for her? All mothers, no matter what species, love their babies. For example, the connection that an orca mother feels with her newborn is also instantaneous and lifelong. In fact, orcas in the wild live in pods or families of up to 30 orcas, including mothers and their calves, and they travel together for their entire lives. SeaWorld and other marine parks take baby orcas away from their families. People have recorded the cries of a mother orca as her baby was being torn away from her, and they're heartbreaking. Animals also mourn when their friends or relatives die. Cows mourn the deaths of their loved ones, even crying tears over their loss. Gray lag geese who lose their partners literally hang their heads in grief, shuffle along the ground, stop eating, and stop grooming themselves. They sink into depression, and elephants touch and hold the bones of their dead relatives and make wailing sounds. What are some of the feelings you have that animals share? What do animals do that show they care about their families? If you think about it, you would always help your friends and families if they needed you. Animals are the same way. Mother rats will even take great risks to save the babies of other rats. Male sparrows know that there is safety in numbers, so they'll often form alliances with their neighbors to help protect each other. Bats will get food for other bats who are too ill to get their own. When hunters shot a deer once, they were surprised that the other deer with her didn't move. They discovered that she was blind and that the other deer must have been helping her get around. The fur was worn off on one side of the deer who was shot and on the opposite side of the blind deer because she had leaned on her when she walked. Stories of animals who have come to the aid of humans have been told for hundreds of years. There are so many of them that it's impossible to recount them all. But one of my favorite heroes is a cat named Tara. One day, a little boy was riding his tricycle when a neighbor's dog grabbed his leg and violently dragged him off the bike. Before anyone else could even respond to his screams, the family cat Tara came flying out of nowhere, tackled the dog, and chased him away. From then on, Tara became known as the Ninja Cat. Some animals, like some people, are born a little bit different from most others. For them, getting by is much harder. There are animals who are blind, deaf, or unable to walk or fly. A Japanese snow monkey named Mozu was born in the wild and wasn't able to run or jump like the rest of her family because the bones in her arms and legs weren't properly formed. She couldn't climb trees to reach food as the other monkeys did. But her mother took special care of her and Mozu grew up strong. Although she was slower than the other monkeys, Mozu worked extra hard to get enough food to eat and to survive the cold, snowy winters in Japan. Thanks to the good example set by the way she was raised, she became a very good mother herself. Now take a look at Andy here. Notice anything unusual about him? Andy had been purchased by a farm to be raised for a lamb barbecue, but he became very sick when he was a baby and was abandoned. Eventually, a kind person found him and helped him, but the untreated infection in his back legs had already gotten so bad that he was left permanently unable to bend them, which made walking very difficult. But now, Andy walks with the help of a cart that makes getting around much easier, and he lives in a sanctuary where he'll never have to worry about being used for food. I bet every single one of you has daydreamed about having a superpower. Well, guess what? Lots of animals really do have superpowers. For example, a dog's sense of smell is thousands of times better than ours. Dogs can smell smoke before people can, and even before smoke detectors go off. And they can smell things deep underground. We need lanterns or flashlights to see at night, but cats can run through dark houses without bumping into furniture. 
because they're able to see in very low light. And at 64 miles per hour, or 104 kilometers per hour, cheetahs are about twice as fast as the world's best human runners. And forget about using phones or GPS devices to get directions. Birds migrate hundreds of miles over oceans and through storms without getting lost. Like us, they use landmarks to help them find their way. They also navigate by the stars, just as famous old world explorers used to. Birds use more than just their sense of sight while traveling too. They have a special sense that works like a built-in GPS. So no matter what the weather, they can tell which way to go. Even the smallest types of animals have fascinating abilities and clever ways of getting by. Spiders are skilled at spinning webs. One type of spider can spin threads in different colors. Depending on the type of spider, webs can be thick or thin, strong or delicate, dry or sticky. Do spiders ever get stuck in their own webs? Sometimes, but they know not to panic. Instead of calling for help, they just spit. Spider saliva dissolves their own webs. And can you imagine being able to change colors to let your friends know what you're thinking? Octopuses and squids can. They communicate with each other by changing the colors and patterns on their skin. They can even send different messages at the same time. One message on one side of their body and another one on the other. Some octopus experts even believe that they have different signals for nouns and verbs. Other animals communicate with each other subsonically. We can hear elephants trumpeting to each other and mice squeaking. But did you know that they also communicate by making sounds so low that people can't hear them without high-tech instruments? An elephant's deep rumbles can travel for miles through the earth, so herds that can't even see each other know where to meet up later. And the subsonic squeaks of mice help them find mates and protect their homes. So you see, just as humans have many different languages, signals, and gestures to help them communicate, so do animals. If you could have any of these animal superpowers, which would you pick? Can you think of other things that animals can do that humans can't? Think about all of your friends. Each and every one of them is unique, right? Animals of all shapes and sizes share special friendships. This little lamb named Pet grew up with four dogs, so she thinks she's one of them. Just look at her hopping around with her canine buddies. And then there's Esther the Wonder Pig. Esther's guardians adopted her as a piglet, thinking that she was a micro pig and would stay very small in size. But they were in for a surprise. As you can see, Esther turned out to be a full-sized pig and ended up weighing over 600 pounds. She was likely bred to be turned into food. But that doesn't change how wonderful she is and how much her human family loves her. Just like any pig given the opportunity, Esther loves to play outside and run around in the sun. And she has tons of fun with her dog friends too. Just by being herself, Esther has shown her guardians and many other people that pigs are friends, not food. Another way that animals and humans are alike is that we all want to have comfortable places to live. Animals make their homes on beaches, in woods, and by lakes. So always leave nature the way you found it. We're even better off. Don't dump your garbage in animals' homes. That would be like if a stranger were to come into your house and throw trash all over your bedroom. Seagulls can get tangled in discarded fishing line. Turtles can mistake plastic bags and balloons for food and swallow them. And small fish can get inside or cut themselves on cans and bottles. Six-pack soda rings can strangle ducks, geese, squirrels, and other small animals. So always cut the rings or pull them apart before you put them in the trash. Remember, litter isn't just ugly, it can hurt and even kill animals. 
Another thing you can do to help animals is not to let anyone pick on them. Bullying those who are weaker than you, whether it's your little brother or a stray cat, is just plain wrong. Nobody likes a bully. Rocks, sticks, and BBs can blind an animal. So speak up if you ever see anyone hurting animals. And if your friends are tempted to collect tadpoles, fireflies, turtles, butterflies, or any other small animals, please stop them and ask them how they would feel if aliens snatched them up and made them live in a giant jar. Imagine being at the beach or a park with your friends when all of a sudden a giant starts chasing you. It'd be pretty scary, right? Well, that's what it's like for pigeons, ducks, and geese when people try to catch them. If you see someone bullying an animal, speak up or ask an adult like a teacher or a police officer for help. Put yourself in the animal's place. How would you feel if you were being bullied? It's important to treat all animals with respect. The animals we live with are part of the family, so we should treat them that way. This includes making sure they have everything they need, like fresh water, good food to eat, toys to play with, a warm bed to sleep in, regular veterinary care, and most of all, love and affection. Cats and dogs should live indoors with you and should always wear some kind of ID in case they get lost. Make sure your dog gets plenty of walks and plenty of time for sniffing the surroundings. Always be patient with your dog. You can help save dogs and cats. Every year, millions of cute, lovable dogs, cats, and other animals end up in shelters because there aren't enough good homes for them. For every animal bought from a pet store or breeder, an animal in a shelter has to be put to sleep because a family decided to buy an animal instead of adopting one. Not only will you be saving a life by adopting from a shelter, you'll also be getting a new best friend to shower with love and attention. The animal members of our families depend on us to protect them and to take care of them, so be sure to be their best friend in every way you can. And you can help fewer animals end up in shelters or on the streets in the first place by making sure that when your family adopts animals, they always get them spayed or neutered. Can you think of some ways to be a better best friend to your dogs, cats, and other animals? From dogs to frogs, all animals need us to stick up for them. We're pretty lucky because today, more than ever, it's easy to help animals just by making kind choices. Remember when we talked about how smart and affectionate rats are? It's so easy to make sure you're making choices that won't hurt them. Ask your parents to buy only cruelty-free personal care and household products like toothpaste, deodorant, laundry detergent, and more. Nowadays, thousands of companies that once tested things like shampoo, soap, and cleaners on rats, mice, and rabbits test their products in test tubes and petri dishes instead. Just make sure products say cruelty-free or not tested on animals on the label. Your science class can be a great place to defend animals too. Animal dissection used to take place in almost every biology class, but now students have the right to refuse and there are dozens of computer programs, apps, and models that teach biology without hurting a single frog, cat, or fetal pig. Studies have shown that students who use these modern methods learn just as much or more than students who cut up animals. You can make a difference for animals at school just by saying no to dissection. What are some other choices you can make that can save animals? Animals deserve to be free. Just ask Ursula. Ursula used to live in a tiny, miserable concrete pit at a roadside attraction where she had to beg tourists for food. She was forced to have cubs over and over again, and her babies were taken away from her right after they were born. When Ursula was finally rescued and taken to a sanctuary, she was pregnant again. When she got there, she went into her new den and came out months later with three beautiful new cubs. Ursula finally gets to roam free, but the best thing about her new home, she finally gets to keep and raise her own cubs. Look at them play. 
Now meet Sunder. For years in India, he was beaten and kept tightly chained by all four legs, first at a temple and then in a shed. He was forced to perform tricks for money, but not anymore. Sunder now lives at a huge elephant sanctuary where he can finally roam around and explore acres of forest, streams, and ponds with other elephants for the first time in his life. Just look at him swimming with his buddies. If you want to help animals like Ursula and Sunder, it's easy. Tell your parents you'd rather go for a hike in the woods or take a whale watching trip than go to a zoo, animal circus, marine park, or aquarium. That way, you can see animals in their own homes. Animals are alive for their own reasons, not to entertain us. In zoos, lions are forced to live inside tiny cages that are nothing like their natural homes in the wild. Elephants in circuses are taken away from their mothers as babies, abused, chained for days at a time, and forced to perform headstands and other tricks that they would never naturally do. At SeaWorld and other marine parks, orcas and other sea animals are forced to perform silly tricks, and they're confined to tiny pools that are way too small for them. Can you think of a way to help an animal who shares the world with us? I hope by now you understand that animals are a lot like us and can see just how easy it is to be a hero for them. Even though they can't talk to us in our language, they still express their emotions in many ways and their lives and families mean as much to them as ours do to us. To understand them, we just have to pay attention. Remember, every choice we make affects animals. Whether it's eating a veggie burger for lunch or saying no to dissection, you can help animals by making kind choices. Never bully them and always stick up for them if they are being bullied. All lives are precious. Every living being matters. So let's share the world. Thanks. For more ways to help animals, check out PETAKids.com.